is full of iconic figures. The people praise and they stock us up at a high percentage. The giants in our eyes, the sky's the limit. The picture painted is larger than life, but God is bigger. Your God is greater. I weigh them on the scale like cracks and gators found that only God can save us. And God is gracious, that's who we flock to. And the day of trouble, it will be blow it like hot food. The song's official, nobody's greater for Sean Mitchell. You got it right with that song, it echoes the heart of scripture. Yeah, they wonder why we so serious. It's cause Jesus Christ is also man, period. Okay, my Jesus, the son Christ, the king of kings, and he's God on earth. My Messiah born and raised to give us all a second birth. And from heaven he came down, down to free all that we're bound. Oh God, the four and twenty fell down, casting down their crowns. Saying, Thou art worthy, Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power. So every man, woman, boy, and girl, let's make this declaration around the world. Good morning and welcome to Heritage, everybody. Are you guys ready, hallelujah, to give God the highest praise? Come on and stand to your feet and join us in praise and worship. Hallelujah. Lord, you are good and your mercy it endures forever, oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Put your hands.
Hallelujah. I tell you, the Lord is good. I say he is good. <laughs> Woo! And we're here today to feast on his goodness. Because you know, the word says the Lord is good to all. To all. Not just some people. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. You are only good. Hallelujah. <laughs> I tell you, we can rejoice in his goodness. Because his goodness and mercy endures forever. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We can always have your goodness because we're in you, Jesus. The word says when we're born again, we are placed in you. Yes. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things passed away. All things have become new. Oh, thank you, Jesus. For the intimacy you've given us to be in you and you in us so that yes goodness and mercy follows us all the days of our life all the days of our life only goodness <laughs> and mercy Thank you, Jesus. We thank you. We rest in your goodness. Yes. We receive your peace now. Knowing we have your goodness. Knowing you will never leave us, never you forsake us. We turn our eyes upon you, Jesus. We put all our trust in you because your favor is upon us your eternal favor yes Lord open up eyes of spiritual understanding so we can see more of what you have for us Jesus and what you've done for us Jesus Thank you for your spirit that's here in this place. Whew, thank you, Lord. Yes, even your healing that's here in this place. Yes, whoever's having back pain, receive your healing right now. Right now. Because you know what? The healer lives inside of you. The same spirit raised Christ from the dead. He dwells in us. And the word says he quickens our mortal body. He manifests the healing in our body. And the Lord is present to heal. Jesus is right here in our midst. And we thank you, Jesus, for everything that you're doing in our midst. Throughout the duration of this service. And it's all for your glory, Jesus. Thank you for being glorified in our midst this morning. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Well, good morning, Heritage. Good morning, sir. Welcome to our Sunday morning power pack worship service we want to thank you for joining us this morning also we want to welcome all of our first time visitors and all of our guests maybe you're viewing the service online for the first time we welcome you and for those in the sanctuary we welcome you as well but for those in the sanctuary now we're not going to ask you to say anything but we would love to welcome you with all of our first time visitors please stand and remain standing so that we may welcome you first time visitors and guests you're here for the first time. We want to welcome you, acknowledge you, 
Okay, praise God. We're all family here this morning. I don't see anyone standing. Wow. And maybe you're in the service and you would like information on becoming a member right here at Heritage. At the end of the service, someone from the foundation class will be at the front of the sanctuary right over here on my left, your right. Just come on up to the front of the sanctuary and they'll give you information on becoming a member right here at Heritage. You can also follow us on social media. Enjoy the rest of the worship service. Here are the announcements. Ladies, mark your calendars now. Friday, November 18th, Ladies' Comedy Night. Any ladies that would like to audition for the Ladies' Comedy Night, please stop by the Welcome Center after service. We will be having our Hardin County Family Christmas Festival December 2nd at 6 p.m. You can stop by the table in the foyer after service to register to volunteer. We need volunteers to play Christmas characters like the wise men and the shepherds. If you are interested, please stop by the table after service. We want to thank all of our first time visitors for joining us today. We have a free gift just for you in the gathering place today after service. Heritage is participating with Helping Hands of Hope this year in their affordable Christmas program. We need your help to provide toys, gift cards, clothing, and other items for children of different ages in our community. To participate, stop by the table in the foyer for more information. The Foundation for Abundant Living class is a guide to help you discover your redemptive purpose and live the life God has called for you. Our Foundations for Abundant Living class meets every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. in room 703. The media team is looking for new camera operators. If you are interested in operating a camera, please see Brother Michael Hudson after service. Download the Heritage app today. In the app, you can watch past sermons, register for small groups, and give your offering and so much more. You can download the app today from the Google Play Store or the App Store. My name is Balthazar. I'm one of the wise men who followed the Christmas star to Jerusalem to see the baby Jesus. When I saw him, oh, I was so enjoyed. But I didn't know why. But I knew that he came to change the world. Good morning, my name is Tarmika Anderson, and I'm the lead for our Christmas festival at New Highland Elementary School. <laughs> On December 2nd, we're going to have the Hardin County Family Christmas Festival at Woodland Elementary School in Radcliffe and New Highland Elementary School in Elizabethtown. We have over 100 volunteers. We just need about a hundred more to pull this off. <laughs> if you want to be a part of our Christmas event, Christmas event, come to the table and sign up. Oh, and yes, we will train you. when the light hit me.
They say these mountains can't be moved. They say these chains will never break. But they don't know you like we do. There is power in your tide will never change. They haven't seen what you can do. There is power in your name. So much power.
Well, how many people have something that you're believing God for? Yeah, come on. Father, we thank you so much for your faithfulness. He that promised is faithful. And so we continue to just stand, believe that we receive, and we thank you in advance for it. We thank you before we see it, just like we've got it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning. good morning. Boy, it's good to be with you this morning. How many folks brought your Bibles today? All right, whatever device you have it on, hold it up there. Let's say this together. This is my Bible. I am who it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I'm about to be taught the Word of God. And I boldly declare, my mind is open, my heart is receptive, I'm about to receive the indestructible, incorruptible, ever-living seed of the Word of God. And I'll never be the same. Never, 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 never. Ever, 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 ever. Amen. Boy, I made it. Boy, I was about to be distracted looking at all the different shots. We got new cameras. And I was just looking at different shots of me. <laughs> Go with me, your Bibles, to Mark chapter 9 this morning. Mark chapter 9. We just keep moving forward. Just keep moving forward. I'm going to read just a couple of scriptures for you here. Would you stand with us for the reading this morning? Mark chapter 9, verse 23. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Verse 24. And straightway the father of the child cried and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. Amen. You, you may be seated. Well, we're talking about faith. This, this series that we've been in for several months is called Running with the Giants. And we were looking at the giants of faith in the book of Hebrews, and we'll look at them some more. And then we were looking at Jesus because Jesus came, the Bible says, he is the author and the finisher. He's the one who started it, and he's the one who completes it. He's the one who gave it to us, and he's the one who develops our faith. And, and so we've been talking about how God wants to develop faith. We've been looking at the ways of faith, the, 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 uh, the laws of faith, the principles of faith. And we're going to pick that up. I'm just going to review that for a couple of minutes, and then we're going to go into something I believe that's going to be very important for us uh, in the days ahead. Now, let me say this. I was I had this all worked out, and then as I'm getting, going upstairs to get dressed, then the Lord dumps this whole idea, new idea. I'm thinking, okay, all right, I'm with you, Jesus. I'm with you. And here's, here's the thoughts that I want to give you just to start off. These are uh, some thoughts he gave me. First of all, he said, he said, there's more curse coming. There's more curse coming. Then the second thought is, your faith will work in the storm. Your faith will work in the storm. And then the third thought, now is the time to build your house on the rock. Uh, let me do that again. There's more curse coming. Your faith will work in the storm, and now is the time to build your house on the rock. Jesus told a parable. He said, 
He said, a wise person is a person who builds his house, who hears these things that I'm saying. He's like a person. A person who hears these things I'm saying and does them is like a person who builds his house on a rock, on a good foundation. He says, but a person who hears my sayings and doesn't do them is like a person who builds his house on sand. When the storm comes, the person who built his house on the rock, that house is going to stand. But when the storm comes, the person who built his house on the sand, no foundation, that house is going to fall. And, and so the Lord is speaking to us. I believe that he's speaking to us specifically for this day, this hour, today. We must build our house while the sun is shining, yeah. before the storm comes. When the children of Israel were in Egypt, God brought them out by several plagues, several, several curses that he brought upon the nation of Egypt because Egypt would not obey him. And the last plague was the death of the firstborn. But God had a plan to deliver his people. God always has a plan to deliver his people. And God told them to take a spotless lamb and kill it, everybody that evening, and take the blood and put it over the doorpost. And everyone who obeyed, everyone who heard and believed and obeyed the word of the Lord, every one of their houses was spared. But those who did not obey the word of the Lord, there was destruction in each of their houses. I believe the Lord is speaking to people now because I think a lot of people think that, well, everything's good, you know. I was out you know, the other day and I just saw everybody's out and everybody's shopping and everybody's happy. And it's like, okay, it's all over. The, the curse has passed. All of that's gone. The pandemic's over. We, I, I, and so, but, but the Lord is saying, no, there's more curse to come because there has not been repentance in the nations. The nations are still moving forward with their policies and customs and laws against God's word. And so anytime that a nation moves, makes laws, policies, and customs against the word of God, they bring the curse upon themselves. And since there's been no repentance, there's more curse yet to come. Well, just as the children of Israel heard the warning of God, they heard God tell Moses, and Moses said, put the blood on the doorpost, and everyone that heard and believed and obeyed, they were spared. So the Lord is speaking to all of us today, not just here in this church, but all over America, God is speaking, and he's saying there's more curse to come. And he's saying, you, your faith will work in the middle of the storm. Whatever's coming, your faith will still work. But he says, you have to start building, you have to build your house on the rock while the sun is shining. Now, last week we talked about, the last couple of weeks we talked about faith, and we, we saw how there was a, a woman. Let's go back to Mark chapter 5. We'll, we'll look at that real quickly. Mark chapter 5. Jesus, Jesus here is going through a crowd, and you remember this story, the woman with the issue of blood. How many people remember that? Okay, remember she, she heard, remember the, the, the kind of the ideas that she did, four things that she did? She heard, right? Number one, she heard about Jesus. Because Jesus was going about, he was saying, everywhere he was going, Jesus was saying, repent, the time has come, repent. In other words, change your mind, change the way you're thinking, change your life, because the kingdom of God is here. The kingdom of God is at hand. And Jesus was going about saying, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind. And everybody that heard Jesus and believed Jesus received miracles. This woman heard about Jesus. Number one, we said she heard. Then number two, she believed, right? Because she, she didn't just stay home. She said, you know what? I'm going to get my miracle. She's tried all of the physicians. The Bible said that she had spent everything that she had on doctors and was not anything better, but rather she grew worse. But when she heard about Jesus, 
she got up and moved. So she must have believed what she heard about him. So she heard about Jesus, and she began to say, the Bible says that she said to herself, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. So number one, she heard. Everybody say she heard. heard. Number two, she, she believed. Number three, she said. She spoke in line with what she believed. And then number four, she got up and started crawling through the crowd, and she acted on it. She did what she believed and what she said. These are laws of faith. Now, it's important that you understand that because these, when you put all of these together, they release. This is how you gain access to the power that God has made available to you from Jesus or through Jesus. A lot of times people think, and I've, I've, I've probably taught this way many times, and, and thought this way, that, that God, when you pray, we haven't even got to pray yet. We've got to get faith before we get to pray. But when, we, we've had the idea that when you pray, God is like sitting up in heaven, and he's got all of these prayer requests on the desk. And he's, okay, okay, this is Aubrey. Let's see what he wants. Okay, how's he been today? And, and so we, we got the idea that God is up there kind of deciding whether to answer every prayer when you pray, but, well, we're going to go, you want to go on into prayer a little bit? Okay, okay. Go back to Mark chapter 11, just a minute. Mark chapter 11. Look at what Jesus says here. In Mark chapter 11, have faith in God, verse 22, for verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say Unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, Mark eleven twenty three, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Now, look at verse 24. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Do, do you see that? So, so Jesus, he says, when you pray, believe you receive it. When you pray, don't wait and see if God's going to decide whether to answer your request. Believe that God's already going to answer your request. Believe that you receive when you pray. Now, that, that, that takes a whole lot. I mean, that, that's a new way of thinking for me. That's a new way of thinking for, all, for many of us because we think, like I said, that God is kind of, he's deciding right there. But let me show you, let's see if I can find this scripture. Look, look in Isaiah. Let me show you this. This is going to help you so much. Isaiah 65. Yes, I found it. Isaiah 65. I bet somebody's going to shout right now just as soon as you hear this. Are you ready? Isaiah 65, 24. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will what? I will answer. And while they're yet speaking, I will hear. See, God has already, God has already supplied everything that you need. But your faith it's what accesses what God has made available. God's not trying to decide whether he's going to answer you or not. God has already answered. When Jesus died on the cross, he not only paid for your sins, he paid for your blessings. He purchased everything that you'll ever need. It has been made available. And that's why Jesus said, when you pray, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive it. You don't have to worry about whether God's going to answer. God has already answered before you even Ass. Now we're so used to thinking, well, I, I'm not worthy. I'm not good enough. I haven't, I haven't prayed enough. I haven't, I haven't done enough. <laughs> and this is too good to be true. I'm telling you, he took care of all of that. The blood of Jesus, when you give your life to Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus cleanses you from all un righteousness that means you qualify he purchased it and you qualify for it and therefore you can believe that you receive when you pray 
I'm going to get it. I'm, I'm really praying. Lord, I want to get that. I want that because I want to have that kind of confidence in him. I want to be like Jesus. When Jesus comes to the tomb of Lazarus, he, he, he's getting ready to call Lazarus forth. And he says, Father, I know that you always hear me. I want to be like Jesus. I want to be, I want to be like, Father, I know that you always hear me. He said, but for their sakes, I said this. I want to be like Jesus. I, I don't want to be like, God, do you, are you there today? God, I know I haven't been. Come on, God. No, I want to be like Jesus. And then he called last. He spoke. Remember we were talking about speaking? He spoke to a dead man who'd been dead four days behind a rock in a tomb. He said, Lazarus, come forth. Now listen, 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 listen. I would have gone like, here's what I would have done. Father, we come as humbly as we know how. I've never raised anybody from the dead before. And oh, by the way, he's been dead four days. Father, if it be thy will, bring his stinking self on out of there. Come on, come on. That's the way we pray. We pray thinking that God is going to do something that he commanded us to do. He said, what things soever you desire when you pray, he said, whosoever shall say, He's given humanity authority to speak his will into the earth. And so Jesus spoke to a dead man and he came alive. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. You're going to know when I got it too. You're going to know. You're going to know when I get it. So this woman, she did that. She heard. She believed. She said when I touched him of his garment, she, she said it herself, I'll, I'll be made whole. And then she did it, and Jesus says, who touched me? Because Jesus wasn't, work it wasn't Jesus working it. It was her using her faith and receiving it. Come on, come on. This is the power of humanity that Jesus has given us power to access his power. Through faith. Well, you know, we talked about that, and we said that, that also then there was a, 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 another person who received a miracle also, and that was Jairus. In fact, Jesus was going to Jairus' house. He was going to Jairus' house to heal Jairus' daughter. And so on the way, this woman touches the hem of his garment, and we went through all of that. And then while Jesus is talking to the woman, someone comes from Jairus' house and says, Jairus, don't bother the master anymore. Your daughter, your little girl is dead. Now, Jairus had already spoken also. He came to Jesus because he had heard and he believed. And so he began to say, Jesus, come to my house. Lay your hands on my little girl and she shall live. He had already spoken it. But when they came after, they came to Jairus and they said, your little, don't bother the master anymore. Your little daughter, she's dead. Well, Jesus knew the laws of faith. He walked in them. He operated them. He came to show us how to operate them. And as soon as Jesus heard them say, don't bother, don't bother the master anymore. Your little daughter is dead. Jesus said, Jesus said, only believe. Don't be afraid. He's talking to Jairus. Don't be afraid. I know they said something negative. I know they didn't. I know that it disagrees with what you said. But don't be afraid. Only believe. Jairus kept on walking. Jesus kept on walking. The, J James, John, and Peter kept on walking. They got there. Remember the story? And Jesus gets there, and all of the people are laughing at him because Jesus said, she's not dead. She's asleep. She, she's dead. Jesus said, she's asleep. <laughs> and they laughed at him. They laughed at him and laughed at him. And then Jesus put them all out. He went in and he did what J. Iris said. He touched her by the hand and said to her, little girl, I say to you, arise. And she who was dead got up. So, J. Iris got what he said. 
The woman with the issue of blood got what she said. Now, let's look now at uh, Mark. Let's go back to Mark chapter 9 now. Today we're going to look another another principle that's going to help us. Mark chapter 9. Jesus is coming down from the Mount of Transfiguration. He had just been transfigured before Peter, James, and John. And he sees a crowd, a multitude of people there, gathered around his disciples, and they're talking to them and reasoning with them. And Jesus says, why, why are you questioning with my disciples? And verse 17, let's look at verse 17. One of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. In other words, he couldn't talk. This demon kept him from being able to speak. And wheresoever he taketh him, he tears him, and he foameth and gnashes with his teeth and pineth away. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, but they could not. Verse 19. Jesus says, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with thee? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. They brought the boy uh, to Jesus, and while they're bringing him, uh, the spirit tears him, he falls on the ground, and he starts wallowing, shaking, and foaming at the mouth. Jesus says, how long, he's talking to the father, he says, how long, verse 21, has it been since this came upon him? And the father says, since he was a child. Now, verse 22, oftentimes it hath cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him, but if Thou canst do anything. See, he's waiting to see, okay, Jesus, can you do anything? Have compassion on us and help us. Here we go, verse 23. <clears throat> Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that what? Believeth. Now, here's, here's where I identify with this guy. Straightway, the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Now, remember, the Bible says with the heart, man believes. So, so he, he says, okay, I believe, but help. I've got some problem with my head. I believe with my heart, but in my head, there's some unbelief. And I, I can identify with that. And a lot of times, listen, listen, listen. It's, it's sometimes it's the unbelief in our head that's hindering the faith in our hearts. Sometimes we're praying and we're not seeing answers because we believe with our heart, but we've got a cloud of unbelief in our head. Now, we don't have time to go there, but in, in First, Corinth, uh, First Thessalonians, it, it, it talks about how you and I, we are all a three-part being. Every human being is a three-part being. We are a spirit. We have a mind or a soul that includes our intellect, our emotions, our, uh, our reasoning. Our, all of that's our soul, and we live in a body. Now, before you got born again, your spirit man was dead. In other words, the, your spirit man is what connects to God. It's, it's where faith flows and brings grace into your life and power comes through your spirit man. But before you got saved, your spirit was dead. Your soul, your mind is like, um, it, it's like a faucet. It turns, it turns on or off the flow. So when you got saved, God's put a river on the inside of you. There's power on the inside of you. But your mind can keep you from receiving. Did you understand? So what God says is you have to renew your mind with the word of God so that now your mind is lining up with your spirit. Instead of your mind lining up with the world and lining up with the flesh. So we're, renewing our, we're feeding our faith with the word of God so that we start to line our mind up. So that our mind starts opening the faucet up to the Holy Ghost. Are, are y'all getting it? 
I know y'all look like you're studying. Boy, y'all look so studious. That's, that's right. That's right. So, so, so what we need to do because of the unbelief that's been hindering us in order to be ready for what's coming, in order to be able to keep our house strong, in order to be able to stand in the storm, we've got to get rid of the unbelief. So I want to give you just some, some very quickly a couple of things about this getting rid of the unbelief. And I don't have time to develop it all, but just trust me. I'll fix it a little bit better in the second service. But listen, listen. You, one of the keys to overcoming unbelief is confession. Confession means, it, it comes from a Greek word, homologeo, which means to say the same thing as. It, it means to agree with. So confession. Uh, we can use our confession to program our minds to be open to the word of God rather than the world. Now, right now, the devil is programming your mind all the time. He's programming your mind to want the world. He's programming your mind. I mean, we all want to be liked, don't we? We, we want people to like us. Well, the devil, want, he knows that. And that's why he, he's got this thing that, that he'll make you do things so that people like you. He'll make you choose things. He'll make you decide things. He'll make you do things because he knows that we all need, to, we want to be liked. So there are many ways that he, he, many things he uses in our minds to get us to agree with the world instead of with the word. You have to program, once you get born again, you have the privilege of programming your own mind. You have the privilege, once you get born again, you have the privilege of changing the program that's running in your mind. But, but you have to do it. Here's, here's, here's how you do it. Confession. Let me just hit one real quickly. Boy, well, we don't have to look at that one. We have time to look at that one. Okay, go to John chapter 15. John chapter 15, okay. Well, I was feeling ambitious today. I don't know why I wrote all of this down. John chapter 15, verse 7. Here's what Jesus says. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. All right? So here's a confession. You could, you could either just read that scripture to yourself. You, just, you could just read that to yourself out loud. You can say, if if I abide, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Or you can make a confession. You can say that I, I regard God's word. His word abides in me. And when I ask, I receive. You, any kind of way you want to word it that works with you, that gets it into your mind. Do you, do you understand? So I, re, I regard God's word. I abide in God's word. God's word abides in me. And I ask and I receive. But what you have to do is you have to take scriptures boy, and you have to apply those scriptures to your mind so that you're renewing your mind so that your mind agrees with your heart, with your spirit. Okay. okay? Now, all right, let me change directions. Got to do this real quickly. In your bulletin, these are a couple of programming things that the enemy has been able to use. In your bulletin, you have two uh, two sheets. One is about Halloween. Halloween is rooted in paganism and idolatry. So when you get a chance to read that, just so that you, you'll know what the roots are of this holiday and why the curse is coming on our land. The second one is a, a Kentucky amendment to the Constitution that will keep abortion, uh, keep funds keep the Constitution from being used to fund abortion. Okay? Now, we can talk about this one, about abortion, because it's not about a political party, and it's not about electing an, a, per, a person. So we can talk about it in church. <laughs> Here's what the amendment says. This is all that it says. You have it in your sheet. 
It says, to protect human life, nothing in this Constitution shall be construed to secure or protect a right to abortion or require the funding of abortion. Okay? That's all that this amendment says. And now here's, here's an opportunity for us. Because a lot of times, we want to believe God for us but we don't want to agree with what God says. God says, thou shalt not murder. So it's important, and we don't always get this opportunity. We don't always get a chance to make a decision for God's side. So when you go into the vote, voting booth, Go, I, the Lord showed me this. Going into the voting booth is, is, is like what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6 about praying. He says, when you pray, go into your closet and shut the door. And nobody's in there with you except God. And he says, God who sees in private will reward you openly. And when you go into the voting booth, you have an opportunity to just, I'm on God's side. I choose God's will, God's way. See, if you abide in me, Jesus said, and my word abides in you, then you'll ask what you will and it shall be done in you. But if you have no regard for the word of God, it's going to be very hard for your faith to operate. So this is an opportunity for every Christian in Kentucky to choose, I'm going to vote God's way. And when the storms come, when the plagues and the curses come, I believe God that I'm going to be free and my family is going to be protected. Let's bow our hearts together. Father God, I thank you for the hand of your protection on your people. Thank you for your, your laws, your will, your word that shows us how to live. And I thank you that you've given us the ability to choose your ways, to choose your word. Today, we decide, God, thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Leroy. Hallelujah. Well, let's get ready to worship the King of Kings and Lord of Lords this morning with our tithes and offerings. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. As you prepare to give today, I want to let you know there are several ways that you can give. If you like, you can text your giving to Heritage KY to the number that you see on the screen, or you can go on the church website, give on the church website. Very convenient way is to download the church app and give on the church app. If you're watching us uh, online today, and if you would like to mail your giving in, you can mail your giving in to the address that you see on the screen. And if you're today writing out a check, you can write out to HICC, Heritage International Christian Church. So no matter how you give today, God sees and he will bless. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as we come before your throne today with our tithes and offerings, we come with confidence that as we sow this seed into the good fertile grounds of this ministry, it will produce. And Father, we're believing you for increase. On every seed we sow, in Jesus' name, amen. You may come forth and give.
Praise God. What a time we had in church today. You know what? Last week we had a baptism, so we want to celebrate everyone who got baptized, any, any chance we get. And so let's just celebrate Jeffrey Darden. He got baptized last week. There he is on the screen. We're so excited for him. Let's all stand together. If you have any prayer requests, any prayer needs at all, at the end of the service, come down front and see the prayer team. They will pray with you. If you'd like to become a member of the church, maybe you want more information about who we are as a ministry, at the end of the service, come down and see the foundations team, and they'll get you connected. All of our first-time visitors and guests, we want to thank you for worshiping with us. We have a free gift just for you. Once you exit these doors, look to your left to the gathering place. You'll meet the hosting team there, and they'll have your free gift.